In today's Lightroom tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take a very average nightscape picture like this that was by the way shot with a Canon 600D and a kit lens and how you can turn it into a photo like this at the end. I'm going to explain you the whole process from start to finish. Quickly before I get started with the editing, I know that this isn't the best picture there is. There are a lot of random objects that don't really work, such as these houses, the power lines, the fence, and especially the village in the background that gives a lot of light pollution. So it's not going to be on the front cover of National Geographic even after the editing, but I actually think it makes a lot more sense to show you the editing on a picture like this, because most people don't have access to a desert with an amazing amazing foreground element with the Milky Way in the right position, probably most people will have kind of a picture like this already in their Lightroom library, or they will be able to shoot a picture that is very similar to this. Alright, I think that's enough talking for now, let's get into the editing, and the first thing you want to do is go into the lens corrections, remove chromatic aberration and also enable profile corrections, and that will just get rid of the distortion. I'm gonna bring down the vignetting a little bit here, but the distortion is definitely what we want this for. Then I'm also gonna go into the detail tool and I'm gonna zoom in here so I can show you that a little bit better. And you wanna go to the color slider and bring that all the way to the right right away, as well as the smoothness slider. And what this will do is get rid of the purple and green sensor noise that is in your picture, that is especially visible in star pictures shot at the high ISO, and at the same time it doesn't have any bad impact in your picture at all. And then the next thing that we also want to do is just make sure that the horizon is straight. So that looks pretty good. Alright, so now we have a nice starting base. For the next thing, I'm going to go into the color temperature and just bring that down a little bit, make it a little bit more bluish because it's a night scene. It works a lot better that way and it was definitely too warm before. So after you've done that, you probably want to experiment with the exposure. And this is the very difficult part because you're going to have to find a way to combine both the foreground as well as the stars. And in this particular picture, I really want the foreground to be kind of dark, almost not visible. But at the same time, I want the stars to be very bright and very pronounced. There are a couple of ways that you can do that, but the way I find it to work the best is to first of all just look at the exposure and fine tune it for the stars. So here I'm just going to make it a little bit brighter and once again just look at the stars, not at the foreground at all. Then in terms of the contrast, once again you mainly want to look at the stars. So I'm going to bring the contrast all the way to the right. While I'm at it, I'm also going to bring down the highlights just to kind of equivalent out some of the highlight parts. Then with the shadows, definitely want to bring them up because that will make the foreground look a lot more a lot more fine-tuned, especially if we're going to bring down the exposure for the foreground afterwards. Then with the whites, you also mainly want to look at the stars, but you can't really go too far here. So probably around 20 works pretty well. And then the next thing is also to bring down the blacks, because that's really going to make your stars pop and give a lot of differentiation from the stars to the dark background. So once again, just going to look what works best here, probably around minus 50. And then in terms of the vibrance and saturation, I'm actually going to leave that out for now. Same with the clarity and I'm going to go to that a bit later. And if I show you from before to after, it already looks a lot better, but there's still a lot to be done, especially because I don't really like this very bright foreground. I think it takes away a little bit too much attention. So what I'm going to do is grab a graduated filter, drag it over the foreground with a very soft edge and then go into the minus exposure. So here you really have to make sure that you don't go too far and you don't make everything completely black. But at the same time, you want to make sure that your feather and your edge, it really works together with the rest of the picture, but it also can't be too harsh. So you really have to fine tune that and look at the picture and make sure you have it in the best possible way. So I think that looks a lot better. I really like the less attention on the foreground and the much bigger attention automatically on the stars. 
Then for the next thing, I'm gonna go into the tonal curve, bring up the highlights all the way, just to exaggerate the very bright stars even more. And then with the rest of these sliders, they are really dependent and according to your style and picture, you might want to bring them up or down. So really just try them out. There's not really anything in particular that I can tell you. Maybe I'm even gonna bring down the shadow some more. And honestly, in terms of the global adjustments, there's not so much more that I'm gonna do right now. We definitely, I'm definitely gonna go into the HSL tool a little bit later on and fine tune the colors. Split toning, I'm not gonna use in this kind of picture. And other than that, there are some fine adjustments that you could do, but they don't really have a very severe impact to your picture. So what I'm gonna do is go into the local adjustments and this is really where you can fine tune your picture and make it look truly good. And the first thing that I wanna do here is make this entire spot less bright because especially if I show you a little bit of a distant view, you can really see this kind of stripe and it doesn't really work. So this is something that you might not be able to fully do with the graduated filter, for example because you really have to do some more fine tuning as in this particular case. So what I'm actually gonna do is grab the adjustment brush here. For the adjustment brush, you wanna make sure that your feather is at 100, that your flow is at 100, as well as your density. And you wanna make sure that you disable auto mask because if you're gonna enable auto mask and draw over your picture, it's gonna try to select what it thinks you want to be selected, which oftentimes results in a weird artifact and you know, kind of a look like this. So this is absolutely not something you want. So just disable auto mask. All right, then another great thing, by the way, I'm gonna go back here into the one to eight aspect ratio. And let me explain you why, because if I would be normally zoomed in and I would want to add an adjustment brush as big as it gets, I could do something like this and of course fine tune the exposure and even though the graduation from the actual effect to the rest of the picture is relatively soft, it's not quite soft enough. I would love if Lightroom would have the possibility to set the feather to 200 or 300 but unfortunately it doesn't let me do that as of yet. So what I'm gonna have to do is just zoom out so I can ultimately have a bigger size and with that a much softer feather. And you can even adjust the adjustment brush partially outside of the picture because we really wanna mainly look at the feather and make the adjustment go seamlessly with the rest of the picture. So I'm gonna fine tune the actual effect here and once I'm done with that, I'm even gonna zoom in here, hold down the old key or the CMD key on a Mac and that will give me a minus adjustment brush. So for example, if I show you, by the way, a very, very soft graduation as you can see here, but this uh, is the mask of the previous adjustment brush but because I only really did that for the sky and I had to do it this way to get this very soft feather. I'm now once again just gonna press down the alt key and get rid of any of this adjustment on the actual foreground. So it's really kind of annoying that you have to do it this way to really get such a soft feather, but you know, it's the way it is. You can't really do anything about it. So now we really just have the effect on the actual sky and you can see how soft it is. Despite maybe in the in the bottom, it still is a little bit too much. So for that, you could hold down the old key and also zoom out and just kind of remove that a little bit with the feather once again. So you also have a very natural and very organic effect there. This might be a little bit confusing at first, but I hope you kind of get the, you know, the reasoning behind it and why I do it. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. By the way, I might even add a little bit more minus exposure on just the right here. And once again, I don't even have the adjustment within the picture. It's really all about the feather and make this uh, seem very smooth. All right, so now that we have this, I think the picture really starts to work a lot better. And look at this little bit of orange in the sky right here. It almost looks a little bit like it was something left from a sunset. Even though it isn't, I shot this picture at midnight. It is really just the light pollution from the village in the distance right there. 
but that doesn't mean that I can't make it look as if it was shot at sunset or, you know, kind of a combination between sunset and uh, night shot or something like that. So what I'm actually gonna do here is grab this, yeah, I'm gonna do this with the adjustment brush. So first of all, I'm gonna add an adjustment brush very, very roughly over the entire area that I might want to affect with this warm color because it is definitely a little bit washed out. I have to enhance that, make it more saturated and also make it a little bit more punchy. So once again, I've just added an adjustment brush that's kind of going to look something like this right here. I'm going to fine tune the actual amount and effect of that a little bit later on. But for now, I just want to make this color pop. And this is very difficult in a nightscape picture because it is a super heavy edited picture already. It's the raw file from a Canon 600D shot at ISO 1600. So I'm really going to be pushing the limits of what is possible. But I think I can do it while still making it look natural. Alright, so first of all, it's definitely going to the color and just kind of make it a little bit warmer. And fine tune the actual amount and hue that I want. So just a little bit right here. And once again, I can always fine tune that top part right here and how soft I want that to be. And then I'm also going to go into the contrast and hmm. While I'm going into the contrast, I definitely also have to go into the plus whites. And with that, maybe even with a little bit, just a little bit of plus exposure. And the color temperature make this even warmer. Huh, let's actually see if I can make this, uh, this orange tone a little bit better and a bit more saturated. Just so it works better with the overall picture. Maybe bringing down the blacks, well not really, you know, I'm just trying out some different things, plus saturation, just a little bit maybe, and I think this actually looks pretty good. So once again, as it is right now, it looks completely overdone and not natural whatsoever, but I'm gonna zoom out again and just have this uh, filter selected from this, all of these adjustments, and now press down the Alt key so I get a minus adjustment brush, and just brush over certain parts so I can make this edge super, super soft. And I'm not quite sure how far I can go here. You know, maybe just a little bit. Uh, maybe I have to reset it and do it once again. This is really just fine tuning and make sure that it blends well together with the rest of the picture. And I might even want to do this from the bottom so it doesn't look as overdone there as well. And by the, by the way, I'm also going to do that from the left side here. And if I look at the picture from before that one adjustment brush afterwards and afterwards, it does look quite good. I might have to zoom out again and just kind of fine tune it even a little bit more. But I think that actually works. So now I definitely have to go back into the adjustments because this still isn't quite how I want it to look. Maybe something more like this. Once again, it's really difficult to push uh, a picture that far that was taken with Canon 600D because it doesn't have the dynamic range that, for example, a DA10 would have. But I'm just trying to make it work and look as good as it can at the end. So in terms of contrast, you know what? Maybe I even... Huh, this is actually very difficult. Maybe a little bit into the plus highlights. And overall, just not quite as much into the color. So I think that actually will work then. Maybe I'm even going to grab another, um, actually this time a rail filter and just kind of drag a rail filter over this area and just bring up the whites as well as the exposure and highlights even more. So just the bottom of it looks a little bit brighter and I think it will just work a bit more organic and more natural like that. I think I'm going to add a little bit of minus exposure just in this kind of tree area. And I'm just going to go very rough first of all here and then fine tune the exposure. So let me see, because I think this tree almost had a little bit of a halo. 
so that definitely works a lot better and then just zoom out and let me show you the actual um, the actual mask of it. I'm going to go into the mines right here because once again I just want this in the sky and I'm going to make a very big minus adjustment brush again so I can make this feather even softer and make the overall effect very very natural. So let's see again. Yeah, that definitely looks a lot better. Maybe even another one Evo with even more minus exposure over here. And then fine tune it again and just kind of see here. Make sure it looks all natural. So I think this is really closely coming to an end. Perhaps I'm even gonna go back to this one right here and just go over this part. And I hope you can follow me along because this is quite a lot of adjustments that I do. And it's very different from picture to picture. I also understand that this zooming out and, you know, having this huge adjustment brush with minus just for the feather is very weird. But I hope you understand why I'm doing that. Alright, so I think this actually looks really good. So let's zoom in again and what I'm going to do next is start from burning and to be more specific just starching which is making individual parts brighter. I'm going to do that with the rail filters just mix that with a little bit of plus exposure and some whites and then just go over some areas in the foreground especially I don't think I'm going to do anything in the stars and just add a little bit of interest while at the same time not taking away too much attention from the stars and with that you always want to make sure that you have the feather at 100 and also that you invert the mask then you can just right click and duplicate and uh, drag these filters around your picture and this is something that you could fine tune or not even do at all because this kind of picture doesn't necessarily need it as much as some other photos but it is still nice to have at least a little bit of differentiation and some sort of a lighting scheme within the foreground. Just finish up by adjusting the value of this filter right here. And let's zoom out. I really love this very small view because it's so easy to see whether something works or doesn't. And I was actually thinking about removing these lights right here and as well there. But I don't really think it distracts too much. It maybe even adds additional elements to the picture. So I'm just gonna leave it how it is. Alright, so let's see if there's anything else that I can think of. Mm, there is actually. Alright, so the very last thing is I'm gonna grab my graduated filter here, go over into the minus exposure, really just a hint, and then just drag a very soft graduated filter over one side, in this particular case over the right side, and even adjust the actual amount of exposure even more. And you know, just a tenth of a stop, really nothing crazy. And then I'm gonna grab another one over the very top here and go actually a little bit into the plus exposure. And the reason I'm doing that is so I have a differentiating lighting scheme in the overall picture because on the left it's kind of warmish, there's the light coming from, and on the right it is uh, a lot darker than on the left. So I just wanted to exaggerate that a little bit and I think it actually worked out pretty good. And with that said, I think that all there is left to do now is the fine tuning of the picture. So what I'm going to do is go into the HSL tool and actually I'm going to zoom out again because I absolutely love the zoomed out view to see the picture as a whole. It makes it a lot easier to decide on the colors and every, you know, kind of a very broad adjustment. Here you could, for example, change the hues in the blues and just kind of fine tune that. But I think, yeah, maybe I'm just going to make it a tad bit more light bluish. And you could, by the way, also do that the same with the with the colors right here. Maybe just a little bit of a change and saturation. Maybe I could actually bring up the orange saturation. Let's see. It is very difficult to make that look natural here because I already adjusted this picture so heavily. And then lastly, you could even go into the luminance and just kind of fine tune, you know, your overall luminance and darkness of the picture but maybe I'm actually going to make it a little bit darker, but not too much. And with that said, let me think if is there anything else I want to do. There isn't really maybe just another adjustment brush with a little bit of minus exposure 
and once again just add a little bit with the feather on the left right here. Actually a very very last thing that I forgot is the noise reduction and if I zoom in here and actually go one to one you can see if Lightroom loads that there is quite a lot of noise in this picture. Obviously we shot this at ISO 1600, Canon 600D and a lot of adjustments done to it. So I do want to add a little bit of noise reduction but at the same time I don't want to go too far because if I zoom out here and I show you the difference with noise reduction at 40 it really looks like a lot of the stars are completely gone compared to the noise reduction at zero. So what I'm gonna do is really just add a hint maybe around 10 noise reduction and yeah that way I have the worst noise gone but at the same time I still have most of my stars. You could of course make a trade off if you really think it's worth to do so but I think a little bit of noise isn't all that bad to be honest and I've printed a picture like this in about uh, an 18 to 12 format I think and it turned out pretty good despite of the lot of noise. And what I'm actually gonna do here instead is go grab an adjustment brush, add even more noise reduction just here and just go over this area where there aren't really any stars and that way it removes the noise there but also makes it a lot more smooth and I really like the look in terms of that. And by the way, as a very last thing, once again, we're still in the detail tool. I also want to add a little bit of sharpening and I think about 75 and at the same time bring the masking slider to the right and you want to hold down the Alt or the CMD key on a Mac and just make sure that only the stars are selected. That way you make the stars a little bit more crisp. It's not a big difference, but it definitely helps. All right, so now I'm absolutely done. There's nothing more to the picture. And if I go into the history and I see where we started at, this is really a huge difference. I mean, about two years ago, I would have probably deleted the picture or just put it away and thought it was up to nothing. But now, after all of the editing that we've done, I'm actually really happy with how it looks. Perhaps there's a little bit more fine adjusting to be done, especially with the oranges right here. But yeah, it's kind of difficult to do that while still looking natural. But I actually really love the picture. We have a nice graduation in terms of the sky with the blues from the dark, medium, bright to the oranges right here. And once again, considering that we started off with a picture like this and that this was shot with a kit lens as well as a Canon 600D, I think it is quite amazing picture at the end. I'm really happy with it. This is kind of a weird tutorial because I didn't plan to do all of these fine adjustments at the end so if I didn't explain these that well I apologize for that and also this very weird technique with the zooming out and the adjustment brush just for the softer feather. I hope I could explain that well and you understand why I did that. But despite all of that, hopefully you could still take away some tips and techniques for your own editing and I know that this picture, even though I really like it and especially the before and after comparison, it isn't quite as good as if, for example, a picture that was shot in the perfect conditions with a better camera with the Milky Way on top. But I really wanted to show you how to edit a pretty average and boring picture from a very inexpensive camera with a kit lens and still make it look great at the end. Anyways, I'm sure you're tired of me talking. I'm gonna sign out. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.